Shalom, shalom, chabarim, yes, I, Ras Tafari, here, here, here. This is Ras Ayadonis Tafari, L O J S, the L O J, the line of Jewish Society of His Majesty, here. And here for this, um, you know, they call this Black uh, History Month, we're trying to actually address Black biblical history, right? And beginning off, you know, especially because of the richness of archives and resources with Egypt, and also address a lot of the misconceptions that many ones and ones have, whether whether ones are Rasta or Rasta curious, or whether you know ones are just of other, you know, nations, spiritualities, belief systems, so forth and so on. You know, regarding the Bible, and also being Yehudi being Yehudi in, in interpretation or translation as, as Jewish. We say, we, Rastafari Yehudi, we the black Jews of the line of the tribe of Judah. Now, of course, in the Hebrew, it's actually Yehudi. So it's in the, in the kind of the translation. Things get lost in translation. But anyway, I don't know if you caught the latest on Whoopi, right? And so-called um, the white Jewish community. Right, the white Jewish community reacted because if ones want to say that, well, okay, first of all, first things first, let's go to all right here, right? Actually, let's go to the news. So, right here, here's what's going on ABC, ABC, right? Suspends Whoopi Goldberg for Holocaust comments. So, there's various different, you know, like op eds going on, you know opinion editorials Whoopi Goldberg was wrong dot 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 and right you know Whoopi Goldberg right on Jews not being a race wrong on Holocaust I right? remember this is about like roughly like two days two going on three days ago this particular um, incident regarding Whoopi Goldberg and the view surprise 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 I'm gonna know I'm gonna date myself right here, but you know, some of us remember that Gomer, remember the Gomer Pile? <laughs> surprise, 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 right? Now, New York Post says that Whoopi Goldberg's um recipe for quote Jewish American princess fried chicken end quote resurfaces. I don't know whether this is like to like kind of stoke it up against Whoopi, right? What did Whoopi do? Why is Whoopi, Whoopi Goldberg in the crosshairs when, for many of us in hearing Whoopi Goldberg's um, comments, both on the, the racial level and also as Jews, as Yehudi, as Jews. And l listen, this is Black History Month, so don't let nobody try to take away our identity, those of us, right, over here, especially in the Americas and the Caribbean, you know, after 400, you know, it's 400 years in Slav men. You know, they made, they try to make Slavs of us and then try to call it slaves. Chattel, property, lower than animals. You know, after what we went through and then to recognize that the ocean wasn't even the Atlantic Ocean. That the ocean, <laughs> the ocean, what was the ocean? The ocean wasn't the land, it was the, it was the Ethiopian Ocean. So as many of us are growing in grace and knowledge about who we are, right, and recognizing all the, 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 the evil, you know, that man has done to man, that human beings have done to other human beings. You know, when we look over, you know, not just limiting to us as black folks, you know, over here in America, even though, you know, we have our own history, our own, you know, Holocaust, or you could call it a Holocaust. People get sensitive about that, but I would have thought that some of the you know, some of the Jews, white European Jews. See, this is why people ask, why do you always be saying black Jews? Right? When we say, we the black Jews, right? And I hold to that particular history and royal order, Ethiopian Hebrews, right? We the black Jews of the lion of the tribe of Judah. That's because, as they say, um, never forget. <laughs> We, we got to never forget, you know, our people, you know, this whole 400 year experience, especially those of us who we as so-called black people over here who have a history here in these here Americas of 400 plus years. I'm going to give a little bit of commentary right here, you know, and speaking about this most recent um, thing regarding Whoopi uh, Goldberg, right, and hearing the comments, right, and also who, who's that guy? Um, 
what, what Tony, uh, is it T not Tony, Tommy? Yeah, Sotomayor. I know some of y'all don't like him. you say he hate black women. Listen, people talk about having freedom of speech, you know, and everybody, freedom of speech, when you want to say what you want to say about me, it's freedom of speech. When I then respond and say about you, then it's like, you know, it's like you want to censor me. You know, you want to censor me. You want to flag what I'm saying. I'm not too sure whether one's going to want to flag this, you know, judging by our social media um, experiences and some of the things that are in our history. But we find this to be very, very interesting. And um, Isha Shelley, <laughs> Isha Shelley was, um, had this plan. And I, and I wife, you know, you know, speaking a little bit of, a little bit of the Ivrit, the Ivrit there, right? Isha Shelley, right? Um, you know, when we were talking about Jews being a race, it seems as though they were trying to tell Whoopi that she was wrong on the fact that she was saying that, well, you know, being a Jew, you know, a Jew is not a race. And they're like, oh, yes, yes. And then others wanted to say, well, 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 the Nazis believed that the Jews were inferior, the white Jews of Europe were an inferior race. The Nazis, the not liars. And Whoopi, <laughs> Whoopi. You know, I know previously, we you know, we went in on some of your statements, some of the things you did, but we also complimented some of the, you know, the sound, you know, the sound wisdom. Her comment there was basically just sound wisdom, right? And even though some of us as Hebrews or Israelites or different, you know, in my father's house is many mansions. You know, ones and ones talk about not stereotyping them, but we always get stereotyped, right? You know, all of us are, you know, black Hebrew Israelites, you know, or, or some, when we say we're Jews, they say, oh, no, you're not. See, this is the, this is their racism. And they have the same racism, that racism, white racism and white supremacy. Then they want to say, oh, it's white supremacy. Wait, 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 hold on for a moment. <laughs> what's really going on here? Well, what's going on here is that Whoopi Goldberg, as we showed you up here, ABC, Right, it suspends Whoopi Goldberg for Holocaust comments. Her only comment, wait, wait, three days ago? Wait, wait this is like, we're going on the 6th, going on the 7th? We're going about the 7th? It should be like, yeah, the 7th coming forward today? Yeah? Uh, we're seven days in to so-called Black History Month, and on The View, Whoopi Goldberg, a black woman, I would dare say a black Jewish woman, whether she identifies by blood or by conversion or affiliation or whatever, she gets suspended because of her comments. Look what it said. Holocaust comment. No, all she said, she just had a view. So you mean that we're not even allowed to have a view about history. But these same other ones that want to say their race, you know, the white Jews, and it's Certain white Jews, because uh, now I'm looking up like the response to this since like two or three days, right? Like, beware of the third day, ha Torah say, right? Beware of the third. And so like after the third day, it's like ones and ones really start to kind of, I guess, scrutinize things. So now you're getting out. First, you got the more radical view. So some of the older stories that are out there is a more radical view, right? Against Whoopi, because Whoopi said that being Jew is not a race. Wait, 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 hold on for a moment. If being Jew is not a race, then why do we get to see and hear some of our brothers and sisters over there in the Jewish state of Israel? Should we say the white Jewish state, but the state of Israel, right? Protesting and encounter, encountering racism, white supremacy over there, if it's not about race. You know, see, do we really have to go here? See, this is the kind of things that I guess Whoopi was more moderate. You should let just Whoopi say what she said and let it keep pushing. But no. So the first op-ed we see up here in Los Angeles Times, the op-ed says that Whoopi Goldberg was wrong, dot, dot, dot. Got to put those ellipses in, right? And right. And then now Jerusalem Post says Whoopi Goldberg right on the Jews not being a race. <laughs> Had to hear this on Jerusalem, right? The Jerusalem Post. So she write on Jews not being a race. Mm -hmm. See, when we say we are black Jews of the lion of the tribe of Judah, see the tribe of Judah, uh-oh, 
Now we're getting into the real roots if we want to speak race, but here's also the roots and the black connection. But seeing that many Jews are converted Jews and knowing their history, great book, The Invention of the Jewish People. That's a great book there, historical book there, written by this professor. A Jewish professor did an excellent research, you know, speaking about like the different origins of different people who today are called Jewish, you know, like the European Jews in 740 AD. Many of our roots go well before the A.D. all the way back to the B.C. You know what I mean? So on the level today, being Jew is not a race. But if you watch the clip, there's the clip. And the clip is out there. You probably can look it up on YouTube, you know, or in social media. Face, they're probably circulating it. Once might circulate it after this. All right? But she was wrong on the Holocaust. But it seems to be based on the statements that allegedly got her suspended, fired, suspended, laid off, put on, put on sit down, made her sit down for a while and everything like that. And she, got, she came on another late night show or something like that to explain her comments. And I, I, who was, what was it? The, I forget which one. They all kind of the same. But on one of the shows that she came on, they were saying, some of y'all know, some of y'all watch this, so y'all know the name and everything. So thank you. You put in the comments and I'll follow up on it later on, correct myself or give those details. But they was basically saying, well, the Nazis believe that the Jews, the European Jews, the Jews of Europe, right, the white Jews were of an inferior race. But then Whoopi's response was that, well, the Nazis are liars. They lied about a lot of things. They lied. The Nazis were... So it, it, we're living in this really crazy... Is, is, this, the, is this the end? <laughs> is this the time of the end? Are we living in the end times of the, of the Goyim, right? Of the Gentile nations? Yeah, we use those terms too. But they look at us and they see a black man and then it's no... Is now Jew, is now being a Yehudi about race. If you see me as a black man, or what about my, my brothers, the Beta Israel, right? The other Israelites, the Demona Israelites. What about the other Israelites over there? The African Israelites, what you call African, you know, that, that's a made up something. But, you know, these are the terms we use today, nowadays. But when black people, right, over there in the state of Israel, why are they encountering all this racism? We're not saying all black people, but you know what I'm talking about. You can, you can draw it up. It's there. It's on many of these Jewish newspapers. You know what I mean? Haaretz has articles about it. It's all over the place in English. You don't have to worry about even reading the Hebrew or, look, or clicking on translate. You know what I mean? You could just read it. But some good articles, if you sometimes put on the translate, is, is very good to just see the other people's perspective in the language. Because I think when well, we all have to speak in this medium where everybody can hear you, we have to be all on our guard. I mean, Look what happened to Whoopi Goldberg, right? She's right on the Jews, not being a race, but wrong on the Holocaust. How was she wrong on the Holocaust? She was saying that the Holocaust was not about race. So if she's right on the, the white Jews, the European Jews of the, you know, the Nazi World War II, you know, the Holocaust thing. If she's right about that, her comment on the Holocaust was, was like a response when one of those... Ah, one of those fake friends. Whoopi, those are fake friends, right? Because that same one there that, that anyway, you, you, you know, I'm not, no, you can talk their names. I'm not going to talk their names right now. You know what I'm talking about. Whoopi, you got some fake friends. Watch out, Whoopi. You know what I mean? Because that little clip that I saw right there where you basically said the Jews are not race, and they're like, what, what, uh, excuse me? You know, it's not race. And he said, well, what about the Holocaust? And she said the Holocaust was man's inhumanity to man. She said the Holocaust was evil. Now, you would think that people who say, well, we are Jews, right? And the Jews connect with the Bible, right? Or rather, the Tanakh or the Torah, or the Chumash, or the Berit Yashana, if you want to go there. right? And according to that Abrahamic, we said the root of the Abra Abrahamic faith, it defines for us from the very beginning, oh, Vera, vera, to vera, right? To vera, right? And ra, ra, right? Is evil. So when she said, well, the Holocaust was about evil, it was about man's inhumanity to man. You know, Whoopi, when I, when I heard that comment there, I, I, it, was, it was surrealistic even just to even hear you say that. Not that 
you know, it's, it's what I would think you would say. But the fact that you said that, right, about, what was it, two, maybe three days ago, as we pick up on this right here, two going to three days ago, as you said that about that time ago, we had our podcast, like was on the podcast, Discipleship Radio, the Rastafari, the Rastafari podcast, you know, you check the description right here, also download the app, listen to replays on demand, you know, also we recommend that ones and ones that are really into the broadcast and, and, you know, the podcasts are important and find it to be, you know, a value, please download and share and redistribute as well. But be that as it may, I said the same thing a couple of days ago, was talking about it, oh, it's in a video, a video for this biblical Black History Month, <laughs> this biblical Black History Month, you know. Um, well, that's a whole other subject matter. We're, we're going to stick on this right here about Whoopi Goldberg. So now, how could Jerusalem Post say, see, when you understand what got her so-called suspended, what she said, the clip of what got her suspended is out there. It's a couple of... I can't say, well, we said a couple of minutes just rounding off, you know, both ends of the bread, you know, the beginning and the end of it, you know, the context, if you want to put it like that, right? But her comments on the Holocaust was not saying that the Holocaust, she didn't say the Holocaust didn't exist. She didn't say that it didn't happen. She didn't, she didn't go into numbers. All she said is that it was inhumanity of man to man and then she summed it up on a, another show that she came on after that to explain her views and they and some people comment and said oh she got herself in worse trouble because she called it evil so it wasn't evil it wasn't inhumanity of man to man now <laughs> and then they even mentioned i think uh jody beard or whatever she said something about um uh what, what was it what was it she said something. She Oh, white supremacy. I heard white supremacy thrown around. Excuse me. White supremacy. Now, who should be schooling who about race? Especially this Black History Month. Remember, bro? <laughs> I'm going to say remember, bro. Brothers and sisters. Um, this is supposed to be Black History Month. And this whole thing about Whoopi. Whoopi got suspended. Right from the view because of her comments about the Holocaust, and then they want to attach to it this anti Semitic rhetoric. Let's go down here, right here. Right in wake of Whoopi Goldberg's race comments, U.S. jury reflects on identity in America. Really, it's like anything that comes up or happens, and we say the J word, right? You know, and then we have our claims, we. As black people who have a history, black and brown, reddish brown, if you want to go there with the colors, right? But we as generally speaking overall, black people here in the Americas and the Caribbean for 400 years, knowing the history, right, of a certain demographic of the same J words regarding, you know, things like slavery, you know. And see, we even defend the, the truth of the matter that we don't say that all Jews had a hand in the slave trade, you know what I mean? But... There was some that did, and in our treatment of that, we was addressing some of the same thing and saying to our people, say, listen, you know, some people go into, you know, whether Jewish Holocaust, this or that, counts on people, let's not even go there. Let's not even go there. Because basically it was inhumanity of man to man. We said that in one of the vlogs. That one that we haven't uploaded, we don't want to over-upload, you know, but that's one of the vlogs that's, you know, for this Biblical Black History Month here on Rastafari Jews, right? So, is she right on race? If she was right saying that the Jews is not a race, she can't be wrong on her comments about the Holocaust because nowhere in her Holocaust did she try to, to lessen, to mitigate, you know? She just did not agree with, in other words, it's like people are trying to tell us what we're supposed to think. And see, things, here's where things don't go too far. You know, here is where, here's where they say, say people lose it. You know, like here's where people lose it. All right, so we see this sometimes of Israel. Now, in light of this, they reflect on the identity in America. Identity, in, do you mean white Jews? Let, let's, let's keep it real. Let's keep it a buck now. Right? Or only white Jews can call themselves Jews in America? 
Right? Isn't that racist? As much as we talk about black history, <laughs> as much as black people in America who experience at least 400, well, at, at least between two, well, well, well they, they can't tell us, we still experience it to this very day. That's what some people say it's still going on, right? But at least historically speaking, 400 years, right? At the hand, right, of white Christian people, white Gentiles, and white Jews. Our people, Whoopi's people, if we go into our real roots here in America, some people say, well, or, or you know, black people own slaves too. Right? You know, as though that was the same thing. <laughs> you know, as though even if that was the case, that's the same thing. <laughs> Listen, in a situation that occurred back in, back in the days, if I had a little bit of money and influence, I'll buy up a couple of my people too. If I'm in a position to have them work for me, then work for cracker. Whether it is a white Gentile cracker or it's a white Jewish cracker. Yeah. Now, I know they might want to flag if you want to flag this video so forth and so on. And see, if, if this does happen, it just does happen. We, we hope it doesn't happen because we just, we just giving our comments like other people. But you see what happened to Whoopi. Whoopi just spouted the Anti-Defamation League's disinformation about racism. Wait, what, 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 what? Whoopi Goldberg just spouted the Anti-Defamation League's disinformation about racism. Hmm. That might be an interesting article. So, we, so we're here even promoting, let's go, it's going to be a research. This is like to introduce a research on this particular, not just what Whoopi said, right? Because what she said, it, 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 is, it is a symptomatic of something bigger, right? The response to what Whoopi said was like somebody responding to an existential threat. <laughs> Put that in the pipe and smoke it. So I responded to existential threat, right? David Badiel, anti-Semitism is racism. Whether Jews are a race or not, Whoopi Goldberg. Wait, wait, wait. So anti-Semitism is racism. So if my people, right, say that we are Jews, we are Hebrews, we are Israelites, and we connect and make a compelling and a factual, doesn't mean you have to agree with everything. Because it don't mean that we agree with everything, you know, among, among other Say Jews that are not of our con I mean even even Jews we have the Haredi right don't we have the Haredi we have the Daati we have the the Heloni don't we have those right or, or don't you have those see it depends on whether you want to be inclusive or exclusive it seems like to black people right even with the state of Israel right in these latter days and time there's been enough incidences right that have come up I mean need we mention the killing of the Beta Israel right. You know, um, or uh, the abuse to certain African migrants, right? Or others based on race or even the, the, um, the um, African Israelites of Jerusalem. I want to get their right name, the Kingdom of Yah community. Right? Heal up, Brother Yaniv. Right? Elder Yaniv. Yes, I. So, anti Semitism is racism, whether Jews are a race or not. So, anti-Semitism is racism. Hey, David Badio may have something here. Because if anti-Semitism is racism, then what about when overtly white-looking people who can pass for white who are Jews, right, are biased against black Jews, right, or against Jews of melanin or Jews from from lineages which are not their own. In other words, if I was a white, if we was, like we said often, if we were white Jews, so forth and so on, you know, things would be so different. You know, because some of them are actually a secret. It reminds me of like with Yeshua, <laughs> Robeno, Yeshua HaMoshe. Some of them are like secret disciples. You remember like Nicodemus and Joseph Armentea? Some of them are secret disciples. For real, for real. No, no doubt about it, for real. You know what I mean? I would hope that they can get more boldness and courage to speak up. You know, about the things that they may speak quietly or secretly or even secretly agree that we post and we put forward, right? But what David Badio said, 
He said anti-Semitism is racism. So is anti-Semitism only when somebody does something against a Jew that others of us would see as being a white Jew? Anti-Semitism cannot be... What about when a white Jew is biased to a black Jew? Is that racism or is that anti-Semitism? Uh-oh. Whether Jews are racist or not... You see how they tried to, um, uh, what's that called right there? You know, um, concede, yeah, concede the issue. Jews are, whether Jews are race or not, whether it is or it isn't. Because they know, they know, they know, they know, they know. But it's not what they know, right? See, 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 chet, chet, right? We say chet, like chet, yad, chet, sin, akri, right? What some might call fukuri, right? There is there is chet of of commission and there's chet of omission, right? All my Yehudim, over is what I'm saying. It was a sin of commission, and there is sin of omission. <laughs> so what David Badia here says, he he wants to omit whether whether being Jews is a race or not. That's because no doubt they begin to recognize, man, you know. I mean, even we cannot spin this one right here. What Whoopi Goldberg basically said is a point because then are we to disqualify whether the beta is or words, Are we only Jews or Hebrews or Israelites and can claim our birthright and our tradition, our natural heritage if a white Jewish rabbi signs off on it? That sounds like anti-Semitism. That sounds like racism there, whether Jews are race or not. Right? See, this is why we say we the black Jews, you know, we the black Jews, black Jews, hashtag black Jews, even though they try to shadow ban that hashtag. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. They've already written adverse algorithms for that. You know, yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> why? Why? Right. In fact, if many of those who try to slander and libel us. Just as many European Jews say in Europe, they were slandered and libeled by white Christians. Now, did white Gentiles or white Christians commit a lot of atrocities right, against non-Christians and non-whites? <laughs> to say Jews included? Yes. Yes, they did. But not only against white Jews, but also black Jews. So... White Jews and black Jews, or let's put it in the proper chronological order. Black Jews and white Jews have suffered at the hands of white supremacy. But whenever we start to speak or our people start to speak, they, what happened to Whoopi? They get suspended. They get sat down. They get treated in a very parochial, like a child. They get treated like a child. You don't have no right to speak. You need to get re-educated. The forward here says right here, that was the Evening Standard, David Badiel, and his comment, his, his, the, the, the title, anti-Semitism is racism. Whew. Right? So if I am of a Semitic people, and I happen to be black, a black person, right? I'm of a Semitic people. That just, by the way, has a, has a longer history of being Semitic than maybe like Latter-day people who also call themselves Semitic or Jewish or whatnot like that, right? And I am biased by even other people who call themselves Jews, not because of my religion. Is Jew a religion? Is Jew a race? You see, this is this is the three card Monty shuffle game that goes on right here. So here he's now. So what they're doing now is saying that well, anti-Semitism is racism. I'm not disagreeing. I'm not disagreeing. All right? Because we say, okay, David Badio, anti-Semitism is racism. That means, wait for it, wait for it, incoming, incoming. That means biases that happen, racist acts, police brutality. This is all what our brothers and sisters and across many different communities whether it was the Beta Israel, whether it was the African Israelites of Jerusalem, whether it was, was other African Israelites from parts like Nigeria or parts of the South, the Lemba people, or other peoples were all out there together 
protesting anti racism, anti Semitism in the state of Israel. And get this because of the people being black. And we even have evidence, right, of white European Jews, at least among those radical and racist, you know, out there, even saying a lot of racist pejorative against these people. Like, that identify themselves as Semitic and have a longer testified, documented history of the practice of this faith. You know what I mean? It's, it's, like, it's like Johnny Come Lately tries to take over the whole store. Johnny Come Lately. Oh, we say, say Jonathan, Johanan, Come Lately, right? Jews are just as confused about our race as Whoopi Goldberg is. Okay! The forward, 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 whatever. And notice, this was three days ago. So this is at the epicenter of it. The forward said, Jews are just as confused about our race as Whoopi. Well, it was Whoopi Goldberg confused about it? In a sense, this is like a backhand compliment, in a sense. They're kind of agreeing. See, when you, you have to see that clip. It's a short clip. We don't want to play it, and then they say, oh, well, you playing somebody, copyrighted thing, so forth and so on. So we're just like, this is just a chat right here for some of the co-laborers, the Chabarim, Chabarim, Shalanu, get to that research, you know, get to get, you know, we have to get into research about this because this is very, very important. We were so shocked, you know, and we, you know, we say, okay, what did she, what happened, all right? And we actually, somebody, you know, was demonstrating so tomorrow was there playing it going through his comments and then he played the clip i said get out of here that was it that was it and here's the interesting thing i would expect more i'm sure there's some youtubers or on facebook i would expect more not just about other pro blacks but among the other the other israelites because my father's house has many mansions, so there's many different denominations of Israelites. I mean, we have Israelites, we as Israelites and black Jews and those who identify with being Hebrew, being Israelite, or being Yehudi. You know, we have our left wing and right wing, and we have our more centrist. So we have everything from the more moderate views, right, to the more conservative views, to the more even liberal views amongst those of us who are or who can be identified as so-called black and brown people who identify with being Hebrew, who identify being Israelite, or identify with being, you know, black Jew, in that sense, Yehudi, Yehudin, right? So just to point that out right there, because sometimes people look at us like, you know, like we're a monolith, right? We do have our common denominator, yes, right? And in that common denominator, Right of identifying as Bayit Yisrael, as the house of Israel, right as the once lost, now found, the lost sheep, and our experience, our interpretation of our experience. People can say other people can say our interpretation is wrong, but you notice this: that even regardless of the different lines that we might be on, even the one Westers, the ISU, ISUPK, there's many things that we agree with them on, right? Just principles of our history and past, right? That is right and accurate, right? Abdi or Ben Le Lewi, right? Or Zion Lex, right? Although he comes from more of a, you say more of the black, we say Orthodox Yehudi or, or Jew, you know, um, but they're Israelites as well, but we are Israelites. So we all can, even Shine Pope, right? He made some statements, some comments, Zion Lex, commented to those comments you know but even in that back and forth right there is healthy because it shows that still even though we may differ with one's comment concerning who we are our people to the world we still have a common denominator we have a common denominator and that's for unity and see in that common denominator of that unity there is strength and this is what my the end times of the Gentiles, the nations, and the Jews who call themselves Jews, this is what they fear, right? This is the fear right here, right? So when I said Jews are just as confused about our race, I think Whoopi kind of understands it. She could have said some things that really would have, or really should have hurt some people's feelings, but, you know, based on the statements that she made, she was very diplomatic about what she said, right? She was very diplomatic about that. 
right? Because if you say Jews are a race, and then black people who identify, right, with Jewish or Hebrew or Israelite heritage, why do they get the racist treatment? In other words, if Jews are a race, right, and anti-Semitism is racism, we would think that the least racism should be happening to us when we as black people right, identify or re-identify with our Judaic, our Hebraic, our Israelitish ancestry and history. You would think there would be less racism, right, you know, against us. Not that there's so many acts of racism, right, that have been publicly reported and documented. So we're speaking about things that have been publicly reported and documented. I mean, there's some videos that we had done at the time that some of these other incidents happened, right? And some of those are only in, um, I can say, like some limited circulation. Limited circulation because we just spoke the truth about it, but speaking the truth is an offense, right? Especially in a time of deception. Can Whoopi Goldberg's The View suspension actually do some good? Wow. Hmm. We're all about Whoopi Goldberg now, the Washington Journal, right? So Whoopi Goldberg suspended from the view after saying the Holocaust was, quote, not about race. The Holocaust, okay, what she's, okay, here, here, let us be objective here. Let's take the objective perspective, right? All right, the objective perspective. So, so there'll be some vlogs and some videos that's going to be about this, some reasoning, because even this right here, connects with the, the big picture that that we approach from the Torah studies and the teaching, right? So Whoopi's Goldberg's suspended from the view after saying the Holocaust was, quote, not about race. Now, the justification for it on the people who support the suspension that she should not have said that, they said it was all about race because the Nazis... The Nazis, because the Nazis said so, right? The Nazis said so, right? You know, there's a Rastafari, Bob Marley and the Whale, as some of you might know, guiltiness, rest upon their conscience. Oh, yes, you probably have heard that tune, guiltiness. Yeah, that, that's what it seems to be. There's a, because when you start to really get into the history here, we're trying to avoid getting into the history because it becomes controversial because then we get into the history and we say well based on our research and the facts that we find we find this right here or we find that there they say well you can't say that because they have family right many white and european jews ashkenazi jews especially but other white and european jews or german jews they have family right that maybe their bubba or their um you know, their grandmama, their grandpapa, or somebody in their family still maybe is alive, or, or some people might still have those, those tattoos from, you know, those number tattoos where they start to dehumanize people, right? Now, this is why we say to our Chabarim, our brothers, and the Rastafari Yehudim, we say, ease up on that. Let's focus on rebuilding our, our heritage, right? Rebuilding our thing you know i and i thing right we the once lost now found black and brown people let we of the royal order of the ethiopian hebrews now as far as studying and learning about other areas of history hey let's do our studies there probably be a time to disclose you know our research and evidence but this is not the time this is not the time to get into conflicts about other people who have been successful in expressing um a certain world view that has been, um, how can we say, has been um, we're trying to find the right word, brothers and sisters, that has been expressing a worldview that has been beneficial, more beneficial than harmful to them. In other words, where the European, we would say the white Jews of Europe after the Holocaust, what they did amongst themselves and how they did it in order to say never again, never let this happen to them again, is something noteworthy. 
is something noteworthy to many of us. And, we, and some of us, maybe some of the other brothers can't admit that. We can admit that. It's like what it says in the Brit Chadasha. I will provoke you to jealousy for people who are no people. Right? You know, he, he provokes us. You know, Hashem provokes us. Especially we, the lost found, black and brown sheep over here in the biblical prophecy. Right? So we're not here to really debate whether, you know, they want to say, well, we're not the Jews. They want to say, we're trying to take their heritage. They want to say, well, we're black people. And we're trying to take Jewish heritage. And, but yet we go into our own research and we present historical facts over here in the Americas, historical facts going back to Europe, historical facts going back to Africa. We can get into the manuscripts and the Hebrew and the Ethiopic, the Gutas, some of the Greek and other languages to prove even the artwork. That's one of the most successful areas right there because, you know, the visual dynamics of it, looking at a lot of the artwork. We could talk about the Bolshevik Revolution, right? Who was behind the Bolshevik Revolution? How come they were destroying churches and destroying icons that were black? Black icons of the people of the Bible, the people of the book. Because there you could see the continuity of who the people of the book were as black people. So then, and then we can say it is about race. I think some people are becoming confused because for us we the black Jews right being a Yehudi right is also about blood see for us being Judah Yehuda in that sense Judah and being Israel is about race right is about race so the first victims of white racism and and white supremacy was we the black Jews or, or Israelites, the lost sheep of the house of Israel and Hebrews, we were those first victims, right? That were not of white people, because white people didn't make white people victims. We, we can't say that white people didn't do evil things to white people. This is what we talk about in the Holocaust. Whoopi's perspective was that it was white people, right, who did evil to white people based on a lie. It's like what happened to black people here in America. It was white people, right? And whether one wants to say white Christian Gentiles or white, you know, you know, white Jews, right? Because we see that other peoples, we can even see black people too. If we want to be fair, we, there's, there's, there's black people, Africans in Africa who also had their hand, right? Some of our own people sold our own people. You, have you read the Bible? Have you read Genesis? Have you read when the when when it was Judah? <laughs> Isn't doesn't Jew come from Judah? Like Judah, right? Who said to his brothers, "Why should we kill Joseph?" And said, "Let's sell him. Let's sell him into bondage. Let's sell him into captivity. Right? Let's sell him into Egypt." Is, didn't they do that? So in the so-called quote slavery end quote, we see that right there in the scripture, right in the same book, right? So it's kind of ironic when we think about our experience over these 400 years. And then we think about, well, if we identify with this heritage, with this people, then look at the very beginning in the first book, right? The first book of Moshe, Bereshith. What is it saying, Bereshith, right? So it was not about race. Well, from the German, the Nazis' perspective, it was about race, right? See, one reason I try to caution my brothers and sisters not to, you know, uh, sometimes we spend more time trying to convince you know, people who are not our people, right, then trying to build in, on our conviction. We spend more time trying to convince people who are not our people instead of seeking to build on our conviction. Because we build on our conviction, then even those people who are not our people will be more convi co convicted, right, in other words, or convinced based on our conviction and based on what we was able to do, manifest, demonstrate, put into manifestation. Now, on CNN, it says Whoopi Goldberg apologized after saying on The View that the Holocaust isn't or wasn't. Isn't or wasn't. The Holocaust isn't about race. The Holocaust to the Germans, to the Nazis. Yeah, to the Nazis. If we want to be technical and be objective to the Nazis, the Nazis made their rhetoric was all about race. But then the Nazis lied about many things. The Nazis lied, were very deceptive, were liars. They lied about many things. They even lied about the Aryans. The Aryans were not white, blonde hair, blue eyed people. The Aryans are historical people, but they were not white, blonde hair, blue eyed people. So, so just to say right there, they lied about many things. So ABC suspends, right, Whoopi Goldberg over Holocaust comments, right? 
So suspends Whoopi Goldberg when? Right? Suspends Whoopi Goldberg. Right? Suspends Whoopi Goldberg during Black History Month. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? Suspends Whoopi Goldberg during Black History Month. Now, just let's be fair right here. Let's do this right here. Okay. We have Whoopi, Whoopi Goldberg right here. Let's get a let's get a little still of Whoopi Goldberg right here. Right? Um Jew. To be a race, be a race or not a race. Being Jew, Jewish. Whoopi, being Jew, Jewish, a race or not a race. Now, from what I was hearing, Whoopi, I know it's probably very difficult for, for someone like Whoopi, right? She's somebody who, you know, believes in what she believes in. She holds her point. Sometimes she has her own rationale of the point. Occasionally, we may even agree with her rationale, you know, like her reasoning, her rationale, the point. So we don't see as somebody that's just going to roll over. But this is a very interesting situation. But what it takes attention away from is this Black History Month. Right? Because in this Black History Month, at least on this platform, right? So if ones and ones see certain things get flagged or pulled down, I don't know why it should. Because we're not here name calling anybody. We're just looking at the facts, looking at what went on, seeking to stimulate a little bit of discussion here, which is good for the platform and is also good for, you know, the when I say the platform, our platform, Rastafari Jews, and also the overall platform, you know, of YouTube. Right? Even though we don't um we don't monetize, you know, that's one thing we don't monetize our we say the original posts. Now, maybe amongst others who may repost it, so from someone, some we might give permission to, others just do it, just, you know, they, <laughs> you know, um, they'll, 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 they'll seek forgiveness later, you know, put it like that. But let's look at race. Have you looked up now, shouldn't things be backed up by some sense, let's, let's take that off right there, let's take that off right there, let's go over here for a moment right here. And let's go to the downloads right here. So whoopee on race. We're just going to use this as a still right here. Whoopee on race. Right? Whoopee on race. Right? But here we want to do this right here and look at races. Let's look at races. Right? Races. Now, we did this already. But if you look at races, in fact, um, this is... Now... The whole thing about races, according to the science of race today, right? There's the scientific, um, um, I can't say, scientific qualification, right? Or rhetoric, in a sense, rhetorical qualification on what's race, right? When we look at the races, right, they usually have the white or the so-called Caucasoid. Now, many of these racial terminologies really need to be updated. Some of them are... Uh, like almost like anachronistic to use a lot of these terminologies today, but there's so called white race, the Caucasoid race, the so called black race, the Negro race, there's so called Mongoloid, the Asian race, there's a so called, some say American, like American Indian in that sense, and then they, they call the Australoid, the Australoid, right? Australoid. So some say, Right today, if you look it up, in fact, let me do this right here because I was going to do this already. Let me go back to this right here and let me look up, um, um, let's see, races, races in the world. Let's look up races in the world. Right? So you see this right here, races in the world. So based on races in the world, it said the population can be divided into four major races, namely the white or so called Caucasian, Caucasoid, Caucasian. Right? The Mongoloid, right? which is referred to as the Asian, right? the Negroid, right? which is referred to as the Black, and the Australoid, right? which hasn't been put into any particular category. So basically, what we have is the White, right? the Asian, and the Black. The White, the Asian, and the Black. So when we look at the different um, categorizations of race, going back to basically European or white. Remember, it's the white man that has proposed many of these racial theories. Some of them he has kind of freestyled off of the Bible, 
right, based on the Bible, like when we go through this right here, right? Now, some say that race is not a social construct. Society is a racist construct, right? Society and culture derive from race and biology. Now, this is according to a professor, Douglas Whitman, of Illinois State University. I don't know too much about this professor, but in looking for some exhibits, this is one that we came across. So here, instead of using these, these old-fashioned, kind of out-of-date um, racist classification. Now, here's what's interesting, that along the racist classifications, these particular racist classifications, they go back, first of all, to the Europeans during a time when racism and white supremacy was at a height. And many saw justifications within the biblical narrative, you know, like the curse of Ham. Although the Bible doesn't say nothing about the curse of Ham, they promote this curse of Ham, right? And therefore, also the Noah, you know, the table of nations, right? Noah had three sons. So many people believe that one was black, one was white, and one was gray, or one was black, one was white, and one was Asian, right? Now, let's take Hebrew for a moment, the language, Hebrew. Right, Ivrit, right, or Ivrit, as some say. Let's take the Yehudit language for for a moment. It is considered to be a Semitic language. More correctly, scientifically, it's considered to be an Afro-Semitic language. By saying Afro, is to say Hamo, Hamo, like Ham in the Bible, Hamo or Ham, Ham in the Hebrew, or Kam, Kam, as we say, Kemet. So what we have in the Hebrew language is like a Creo. The Hebrew language is like a Creole because it is properly classified as Afro-Semitic. Arabic is also Afro-Semitic, right? Afro. And when we say the Afro part, let's say it's black Asian. Basically to say black Asian. When we say Afro-Semitic, another way of saying it is saying it's black Asian. Some people know the terminology from growing up in the hood and, you know, Brooklyn and all of that. You know, Afro-Asiatic, right? The Afro-Asiatic black man. You've heard that terminology, the Afro-Asiatic, nation, NOA, the Nation of Islam also use that terminology. Now, that terminology actually is quite correct when referring and linking the black people over here to our broken roots over there. It's actually quite correct, right? Afro-Asiatic, Afro-Semitic. That means that there is a connection of the Semitic, right? So if one is anti-Semitic and is against somebody whose, we could say, race, so to speak, is Afro-Asiatic. Afro-Asiatic. Remember Africa? Afro. Remember Ham? Hamo. Semitic, right? That means that anti-semitism can also be classified as racism I'm, I'm i'm basically just just pointing to the previous um exhibit by that david badiel when david badiel said that anti-semitism is racism whether jew is a race or not but anti-semitism right means that if you speak hebrew you speak in the afro you speak in a language that in its ancient roots this is Black History Month, has a black origin, has a black origin, has an Afro origin, an origin in what they call Africa. Mm -hmm. See, we did say that this is going to be Black Biblical History Month, right, for us, right, right here, all right? So here, this is another social construct that there's the white man, there's the black man, there's a the yellow man, and there's a the red man. Now, we have to remember that it's because of the, the indoctrination in this white Anglo-Saxon Protestant culture that it has been powered over like 400 years by racism, by white racism. And we qualify racism as white racism. That's the only racism in the world that's really real racism. Everything else is just a prejudice or bias. <coughs> you can be prejudiced against someone because you prejudge them to be like this. You don't know them. You know what I mean? It, it, it's based on ignorance and ignorance is lack of knowledge. But it doesn't mean that you're going to put somebody into captivity, you're going to dehumanize them, or that you even have the power, right, the power, position, or system to even do that. So we talk about racism in its true context. So what ones are doing is hijacking, right, black 
history as well as black consciousness. Black history and black consciousness is being hijacked, right? And people are kind of like going along to get along, but when we're not looking, they're inserting ideas that is swerving us off of our own ancestral trajectory. You know, as we see other people are like, like many of the European Jews who are so upset about the Holocaust statements of Whoopi Goldberg, Many of them will no doubt, you know, um, say that they have, they have, have, have a stake in it because of their family, their, their family, they know people, right? It's affected them. It's like when we say how racism, white supremacy has affected us and the residual effects continue to affect us to this day, right? And how when we view the whole white black dynamic that we have suffered through for 400 years and then we see white European Jews right and study the history and say well they have a percentage also in owning our people in slavitude or, or you know slave sl sl slavery that's what we call it we say Slav because of the, the trick that they did by calling us out of our nationality by calling us Slavs, they call us out of our nationality. And if we look more into the whole Slavic, you know, pejorative, instead of calling us servants, instead of calling us bondmen, instead of calling us captives, they call us Slavs. And they introduce into the world scene slavery to confuse, to confuse history. Because what occurred in the past times, right, may be called slavery, but it's nothing compared to real slavery. So what black people experience in the Americas and the Caribbean should give us a right to speak out. But they are always seeking to regulate our speech, seeking to censor our speech. Some people get their thing, what happened to Whoopi Goldberg? She got censored for that. Instead of having a, just a reasonable discussion, because nothing she said was trying to trifle that Jewish people in the Holocaust didn't, you know, white Jewish people didn't suffer. Why right, wasn't killed, why right? wasn't raped, wasn't robbed, wasn't pillaged, you know, wasn't slaughtered, right? Evil wasn't done to them. None of that. You would have thought, and she probably would have thought too, if she thought that this would probably happen unless it was all staged, and I don't really think it was, it could have been, but unless it was all staged, she never thought that. She probably would have said something different. She might have said the same thing though, but she might have said something different. But when we talk about race, do you see what is missing? We see what is written, but what is missing, right? And this is what started to, I think, really hit them up. You see here how they put man? Man is the Aryan. You know, that's why they call the black man and black men boy, right? And then we, as black people, right, in this lost, perpetually lost condition, we perpetrate this lie. Right? Many times black women like to say, boy, stop, boy, this, boy, 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 boy. Now, it might be considered playful in some ways, right? But considering the, the context, right, it is something that we should say, no, 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 never again, right? But because it still perpetrates this same archetype. This is the archetype that still is in the background. It's like the elephant in the room. This is still in the background. Basically, according to what we are taught and according to what is taught in schools and according to what we, 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 we utilize in this society, what is supposed to be, be scientific and what is supposed to be fact-checked and everything else like that, there are between three to five and almost racial like you know, surveys on applications or whatever, there's about six categories of race. But originally, when the white supremacist races started to go into these racist qualifications, categorizations, there were three. There was a mongoloid, the caucasoid, and the negroid. Right? Notice how right here they put Caucasian instead of caucasoid. Right? So there was Asian origin, European origin, African origin. Well, that's, that's incorrect right there. That, that, that's incorrect there. Right? Because what we know is that humanity Right, based on we say scientific, you know, data, the core of what we know as a human being comes from one, not of one blood, as the mistranslation of the Bible says, but we all come from one, right? And that one 
right, happens to be, right, the proverbial black man, woman, and child, right? We will say more correctly, the, from the Hebrew perspective, the red man, woman, and child, but red meant something different in biblical terms than it does today. Because white supremacy also changed terminology, meanings of words, right? This is why so many arguments, so many simple things never get a resolution because we never really understand what the words that we're using. You know what I'm saying? So race, some say, is not a social construct. Others say that race is nature's construct. Because some people say, well, race is just a social construct. We're all human beings. Yeah, just like there are, there are animals, there's, there's birds, there's different kind of birds, right? But there are different kinds of birds, you know, the different, the different species, so to speak. You know, I'm not saying that different races are different species, but there are such unique differences, right, that as we see them today, they seem to be so uniquely set among different people groups spread around the world, right? Now, the exception is, we would say the black race. This is Black History Month, right? So the exception is the black race. Why would we say exception? Because we find that all the phenotypes, because what's really different amongst most of the different races, you know, or what is called races, right, is the phenotype, the features, and the textures of hair and the complexions of skin, right? So these are the, you know, the visual differences, right? The visual differences, right? That, that determine, right? And we do see it being in nature. There's people of similar kinds propagate amongst themselves. They breed and produce the same kind almost consistently. Science, that's science. Isn't that science? Isn't science observable, testable? And repeatable. So, being of different races and producing in those races, right, predominantly produce observable, testable, repeatable patterns. Now, among the black race, we see the different phenotypes, right? We get the most variety amongst the peoples that are considered to be the black race. And when I say the black race, I'm saying coming out of the continent or related to the continent that today is called Africa, but in the ancient world, Ethiopia, right? So race, speaking about race, a view of human population variation from the 50s. All human beings belong to one of the five races pictured above. Now, it's kind of interesting because, for example, for example, what do we see right here, right? In the top center, we see what appears to be an African man. Right? But that African man, right? Now you notice the redness in his in his skin, the redness, like the reddish brown. That's what the Bible means when it says Adam. I just want to point that out. That redness, let, let's zoom in on him right here. That redness you see in his complexion, that reddish brown. That's why when the Bible says Adam and Dom it means blood in the Hebrew, right? And then we have Edom, remember Edom, Edom, right? Also is referred to the red, and then also Adomni, when one is being mentioned, ruddy, like David is called, David is called ruddy, because you have man that has his complexion, and then also man that have a black skin complexion, you know, the black, right, that, you know, very dark, rich, you know, noir, noir, black, right, so we have this among black people, right, and then we also have different features, so he has certain features, you know, I don't want to guess, but I would say Niger. He has Niger features. It seems like he has sort of like Nigerian. Now, Niger and nigger, the, the, the letters, it's interesting how that all, all may have come about as well, right? So we can look at the Negro, right, in the Latin sense, but then what about Niger in the Nigeria and Niger sense, right? So you have black men with his features, but his features is not the majority of so-called Africans today, black men today on the continent. His features are not the majority of features, right? And, and we can show you this by actually, you know, there's some very beautiful collages, right, of 
black men, black women, black men and women, and just black people, black children, you know, of different, you know, of different cultures throughout Africa, right? Today, of today, in 2022, right? In the 21st century. And you can see the various different types of features, complexions. So the stereotype of black people is also racist. This stereotype. They've done the stereotype a lot in the enslavement during the channel days of slavery. You know, the stereotype, you know, like the, the, the auntie mama, the coon, and the buck eyes, and the big lips sticking out, ooh, 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 you know, this goofy stuff. You know, they've done that a lot. And that made not only white people, but even many of us as black people. I remember seeing that when I was very young. And even getting more into black history and black consciousness, you know, and studies, I started to see that and I started to have to ask certain questions. You know, I'm like, wait, I've rarely seen anybody that even look remotely like this. You know, and they're black people. It was so just, just outrageous, the stereotypes, you know. And as I grew and got more conscious of what was going on, of the trick, I said, okay, this is the stereotype. Right, you know, you know that they gave of black people, but it was so, it was so um, evil and so effective or defective that many of us began to believe, even the stereotype. Even though we can look at our family and other black people and don't see nobody that fits the stereotype, right? And some of our people have dark skin. Some of them have reddish brown skin like the brother here. Some have a little lighter skin complexion. May have different textures of hair. But we saw no one with that. And this is without the insertion of white people. Because some people believe that we have black people of different features and complexions. And because like, it's like for example, down here. Let's, let's scroll down here. We have this man right here. Right? This man appears to be one of the Kwa or Twa kind of peoples, if I'm misarticulating, right? But it's very clear he has like Asiatic features. Remember we talking about the Asiatic black man, right? He has Asiatic features. And it's known that population groups migrated, right, out of, you know, that great Rift Valley where the waterfalls and, and all the ancient mythologies, right, and spiritualities point, right, to a region, a location, as we have actual evidence Right, coming out of inner, you know, the inner continent, inner Tobia, inner Ethiopia, called today inner Africa. So we see a brother like this, and he also can be considered to be African, right, on the African continent, right. He has that 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 that, that you know, Asiatic features. But you you see that there are other African features that are not listed here. Now here, here they have like this seems like one of the Indians. Right, or the Hindu Indian peoples that they would call like the untouchables. Right, the untouchables, the dark skin, the untouchables. Now, even that right there shows racism, white supremacy, what occurred in the ancient Indian culture based on the testimonies, you know, of these barbarian, savage, violent, you know, big, kind of like giant white men coming down, almost like this blonde, the blonde hair, blue eyed thing kind of comes in there, but they even wasn't the Aryans. In fact, this is where the white people first encountered the Aryans. The Aryans were spiritual people. They were black people. They were like more like, almost like monk. And it, being Aryan was like to be of a, a particular ethic, like a higher morality, a particular ethic. It had nothing to do with what Hitler and the Nazis lied about. But even right here, this is not the average type of Indian that you will see popularly advertised today. So there is this kind of view of race and populations from the 50s, but it's not really giving you, like I think this brother here is from Tibet, right? He's like from, it's like he's a Tibetan, right? We could be wrong, a Tibetan. But then there's also other Asians. There's many different kinds of Asian peoples, right? Now they all have commonality in being Asian, but there are different, you know what I'm saying? So therefore this simplistic chart of the white man my, I mean, even here, look at the, the quintessential. This is the image of the white man. But remember, this is the 50s. It seemed as though Nazism was defeated, <laughs> but was not defeated. Nazism lost and won. They both lost and won because here they're projecting a kind of a blonde hair, 
I, I can't see his eyes. He might be blue-eyed, right? Right, but you can't see it from this angle of the picture. But it seems to be projecting this image. Like he's probably a British man, but he also could be a a German man. But then we know the history of the latter day Britons and Germany, right? So there's a whole connection there, and we don't need to talk about World War Two, right? How, how come it took the British so long to respond, right? You know, to the Nazi thing, right? I received this letter from Eyal Hitler. We have peace in our time. Laugh track. The myth, the troubling persistence of an unscientific idea. And see, that unscientific idea was brought forward by this guy right here, here, here. Right? Was brought forward by this guy right there, 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 of race. It does not mean that race, in its true sense, does not exist. But we have been exposed to racism, racial ideologies and philosophies and idolatries. This is what the world has been exposed to. So even today, with a lot of the confusion, it's based on the historical confusions never being redressed and, and, and dealt with and put into context. You know, there's never been that discussion on race in America. Remember Clinton back in the days? He was supposed to do something on that. And then I think his own party, I don't know, the Democrats or Republicans, I don't know how left wing or right wing, how that really worked. But they basically squashed that. There was never discussion on race. When I heard about that, I said, hey, I remember back in those days, that still was like the early days of, you know, some black conscious. I call it more the real black consciousness on the streets more than on Sardinetta Studios or the House of Conscious on the, the YouTubes. But, you know, one thing basically in one sense, for better or worse, led to the next thing. But back in those days, right, in the real, you say black, you know, in the streets, black consciousness, you know, that was interesting. Wow. And we thought that maybe we were having that sort of effect way up there, you know, in Paro, in, in, in the American Pharaoh's house. We thought we was having that effect. And then all of a sudden, it just disappeared. Right? It just disappeared. That still needs to be addressed. Right? What are the origins? Who was it? And isn't it the interesting thing that it's like the white man, the so-called white man, the last of all of the, the men of antiquity, the different races that have ruled part or most of the known world. And he happens to be, you know, as we say scripturally, you know, the times of the Gentiles. We're living in the, you know, the end days, the end of the times, the times of the nation states. The white man, the modern white man is the one responsible for the nation states. This is why it's so significant when you can truly interpret the Bible accurately what the Bible is actually talking about. So these things that we're seeing and seeing even more and more, even with the, with the whoopee thing, the whoopee thing was like, wow. We just said this very same sort of thing right there, right? Because we shouldn't be wasting our time. And I would say it as wasting our time, right? Remember that song, the song, Don't Waste Your Time, right? Fighting lies or something like that, or chasing lies, some tune like that. So here is another races of mankind. Now, this basically goes into some of the nationalities, the different nationalities and cultures. You know, you can see the, I mean, I mean look at the, ta remember the Tasmanian people? Remember how the Tasmanian people were totally destroyed? I thought the brother over there, Australia, I thought he was an Ethiopian, right? Because, you know, when I look at the features, I see these features all over Africa, especially the black people, you know, or the melanated people, even some of the people who are not as melanated, right? So this was one of their charts from back in the days of the different races. But you can clearly see that they're connecting the races with the ethnicities, or with the nations, the nationalities, right? So for the white man, the European, race and nationality goes along together. So maybe it was in that view that many of those who were hostile to what, um, you know, Whoopi Goldberg had said, they're looking at themselves now as a nation and looking at the ethnic, cultural, quote, racial identification. But it gets tricky there because if they say, if it's being said today that being Jewish or Jew is a race, if this is what we're saying, and that being anti-Semitic is racism, then the so-called European or white Jews have a lot to answer for, right? Or are going to have to just continue to deal with a lot of cognitive dissonance, 
my you know cognitive dissonance you know what i mean by saying it's racist you know um you know like it's racist you know what's racist black people have experienced this sort of racism so we think that was a particular slight not just against whoopi but against black people for this because her not being on the show yeah they might get somebody else but um what she said right there you know could have been handled differently them just booting her at the time they did was very very surprising but once again back to the races you know it's very kind of clear you know when we're talking about races and when we're talking about jew and judaism and being yehudi you know because there's a difference between being a jew and being of the tribe of judah i don't think you heard me there's a difference between being a jew and of the tribe of judah you see what I'm saying? Because being a, a Jew, you know what I mean? According to what we are taught in this modern world, right? Means that one follows the religion or the faith, or one might say the way of life, so to speak, of, of being a Jew or Judaism, right? But it's very clear, even from the Jewish encyclopedia, you know, and some other documentation that is, is available out there. Right, that being Jew, right, is not a race. I think we saw a rabbi. There was a rabbi, I think, who had commented on the whole whoopee thing, and it was almost like he was he was more or less like apologizing for his fellow Jewish, you know, people. You know what I mean? On that response to what she said right there, right? Because even when they said that, well, the Nazis believed that. When she said that, well, the Nazis were liars. It should have been something like, okay, Whoopi, yo, you got that one there. And we keep it pushing. <laughs> you know what I mean? But there's something more going on, right? And who is the cause of all this confusion? We're showing you this in the video. Who is the cause, right? Not, who's the cause for all this racial confusion, right? And the race thing was used as a kind of divide and a conquer, right? If you notice something that the last of all the peoples, to the white man, he has spent the most time in trying to so-called break down who's who and tell other people who they are and who they are not. It's interesting, you know, like every other civilization and people have long histories. White man talks about this. He encountered people all around the world, right, during the time, he, the 400 years he was coming up. He encountered all sort of people, right, learned all about their culture, their language, so forth and so on, wrote all these books. Even some of the people who may have lost some of that culture can go to some of the books that the white man wrote and kind of connect the dots and reclaim part of their culture. In other words, the white man was that diligent, so-called white man, you know, in his scholarship, but he basically was trying to find out where he belongs. But what he did was reverse it. You know when they say in psychology, you really got this kind of symptom or condition, but what you do, you project it. You project it onto the other people. You're projecting it onto other people. Right, so this is where all these like kind of crazy racial ideas. I got to get a clear one of this, you know, to see how they're identifying this one here, right? But on races, right? Just just so that ones and ones who might not have become familiar, right? This is the background to what's going on today. So people are talking about race today, but it's not in the vacuum. It's based on the earlier ideas and a lot of the faulty concepts. Right? that Europeans, that white men had made in order to, to, to justify, to regulate, in order to dominate this system. You have to remember that the European nations clearly came into the dominance of, of this world system. And then it came down like to the, the, the British, that you know, the British also then ruled three quarters of the world or so. And then, you know, the daughter of Babylon, the daughter of Britain, you know, we get America, right? So we get kind of this Anglo-American empire that's based on the former European empire that was based on the former Greco-Roman, right, worldview. You know what I mean? And this is not even dealing with, you know, how religions you know, have gotten confused in this whole view, right? So just to show you some, uh, there's a few more shots of different things on the races, right? This is how they saw people around the world, right? But even this here is a, a stereotype, is a stereotype. So the white man 
right, even gave to himself a stereotype, a stereotype of what the different races. This is a low, this one here that we're showing on the screen is a little more detail, right? Because see, like the Ethiopian type and some different kind of African, what they would call different African types, right? Right. But generally speaking, they will all go into that one, right? That one group right here, right? Melanesian, right? The Melanesian. So now sometimes these people are classified, you know, the astro, what's it, what's it, uh, astro, astroloid, what they call the astroloid, right? But they are, they say, you'll find almost as many different types of black people across the island of Melanesia as you will find in Africa, right? So you even have different types of black people. And in this sense, I got to be inclusive of like even many kinds of Indian. Right, the Hindus Kush, that whole link right there. So these are Melanesian people, right? So in the terms of race, you can call them um, astroloid, but really they would qualify into black. You know what this reminds me of? It reminds me of this the racial thing going on now is like rezoning. You remember how they do this rezoning thing? Right? Because now in your zone, you have the population in this zone. That means when the next vote goes in, you can really stack things in favor of your community. So what they do is they split the community down and say, oh, 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 we had, we had to do new, new zones. So these are some new zones right here. They, they be doing this, these new racial zones, right? They start out with three, right? They had it to four for a moment, right? And then they expanded now to five, five and six, right? Don't be surprised if they expand it even a little bit more. Why? Because if you really look at it in terms of black and white, <laughs> people say it's too simple to look at it in terms of black and white. But that's the, that's the thing. That's the thing right there. It's really in terms of black and white, right? And not so much black and white just based on skin color and outer types, but white supremacy is the author of racism. This is why we try to qualify racism as white racism. In fact, what we've been showing you is the byproducts of a lot of that racism to show how the confusion among people today continues to perpetrate, right? Because they try to rezone the races. It's almost like whenever it seems like black people's around the world, if they just say black, because I'm sure they do these studies of saying that, okay, black and white, the peoples of color, right, are more than the peoples who are defined as not of color. Uh-oh, genocide. So what they do is they don't want to let us know that, well, these are all, that they view us all as black people. We know it when we study their science, their pseudoscience. We know it when we study their science. In fact, it's that racial pseudoscience that developed in Europe, parts of Europe, and came over here to America that actually went back into Germany. And then after the Nazi scientists and paper clip, a lot of that stuff came back over here again. That's why it would seem that after the defeat of the Nazis and all that so-called racism of the Nazi Reich, right, that you would think that America would have been a different place after defeating the Nazis. But what it was is that Nazism, right, that the same racial isms came into effect. So we can study the historical links of those who first proposed these theories, right? We can see how... The, the Nazis was looking at how the white man, so-called, was treating every other man over here, the Anglo-American man, was, especially the black man and other men over here, men and people over here, right, to gain a lot of his ideologies, right? Some of you might know what I'm talking about. We'll get into some of it more, but here on the video, we're trying to show you, you know, the, the black presence in Europe, because a lot of people, when they said on that other one that, um, that, oh, the white man's origin is in Europe. The white man's origin is not in Europe. <laughs> they say the Asian's origin is Asia. The Asian's origin is not in Asia. I mean, if you study a lot of their history, they will tell you about different migration and movement, and they all move from the areas that are considered cradles of civilization, whether we look at the far, you know, the east, you know, the, cradle, the Babylon cradle of civilization, where they say the, the Fertile Crescent, or we look at the Nile River. These are two major areas, right, that have ancient 
origins, right, of many of the different people groups, right, on the two different, the two rivers, whether it's the River Nile or we look at the River Euphrates, right? And some say that when the earth might have been in a different landmass configuration, these two were connected. Right? These two that are disconnected on today's map were connected. But here is some of the first Europeans right, were melanated and, in, in other words, were black peoples, right? the first Europeans. So when you hear them say, well, the white man has his origin in Europe, that's a lot. Or the Asian has his origin in Asia. The real origins right, are that far East Africa region. The Far East Africa region, we, we coined this terminology, Far East Africa region. That means from the river, the river of Ethiopia, the river of Egypt, going all the way to like the Kenya, Wakanda, Uganda, the Tanzania, you know, where, where we have the Rift Valley and the, and the headwaters, you know, and deeper like Zimbabwe, like going into, you would say going into inner, the inner part of the continent, right? This is where the real roots Right, of humanity is the, 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 the primary roots right? we have the primary roots right? and then as we get to the Fertile Crescent over there in, 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 in like Babylon and in, in, in that part of the world the Fertile Crescent right? that is a secondary root that's a secondary root so primary from the continent and thus we have the reddish brown black man the reddish brown black man. Right? So anyway, brothers and sisters, this whole Oprah thing is very interesting. You know, we'll try to share this one as soon as possible. Right here, here. Huh? Whoopee, whoopee, whoopee. Thank you. Thank you for the reminder. I had to be reminded. I said this Oprah thing. In fact, I think we saw something on Oprah right there. We was actually gonna do a next video of Vlog, but once we saw this this whoopee thing, right? This whoopee thing. Um, let's do this, let's do this right here, here, here. Yeah, let's do this right here. Um, let me see if I can just go back right here to the, to the Whoopi page. Okay, Whoopi page. Let's look at all right here. All right. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the way we wanted to look at it, but okay. Just so one can see some of the news stories that we were commenting on. Whoopi Goldberg was wrong and right. It's not just the Holocaust that Whoopi got wrong. So it's more than the Holocaust you got wrong, right? Whoopi's right on Jews not being a race, wrong on Holocaust. Whoopi Goldberg's recipe for a Jewish American princess, the JAP, that's what we call the JAP, Jewish acronym, Jewish American princess fried chicken resurfaces, right? And then the Times of Israel, right? Um, in wake of Whoopi Goldberg's race comment, race comment, was it a race comment? Because we are black Jews, right? We the black Jews. There are white Jews. And there are differences, to put it as, as diplomatically as possible, right? Racial differences between these two groups. Not because of being a Jew or practicing the faith of Judaism, right? But because of racism and white supremacy. So the U.S. jury, they reflect on identity in America. Identity, they mean they reflect on their identity because what they're encountering is more and more people like myself and like some of y'all, you know, that identify with this, right? And in spite of their pretense, many ones pretense to being not racial or not racist, everybody else can seize it, <laughs> right? As a Jew, they, 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 there we go right there, nj.com. 16 hours ago. As a Jew and a rabbi, I'm embarrassed about what happened to Whoopi Goldberg. That's the one right there. Whoopi Goldberg doesn't decide what Jews are. We do. That's an opinion that she don't decide. Well, we say that, that's exactly what we say. We agree with that. That Whoopi Goldberg, okay, she doesn't, and neither do European Jews decide who's a Jew. I mean, I mean think about that for a moment. White Jews are going to decide who's a Jew. This kind of explains what we've been seeing in the state of Israel. You know, the racism, police brutality, other things we've been seeing that's been advertised there. You know, why Whoopi and all of us should read Maus. Maus, okay, this is Haaretz. 
Whoopi Goldberg apologized after saying the view uh, on the view that the Holocaust isn't about race. All right? But maybe they didn't like her apology, you know? Because she might have said, I apologize about, you know, you know, people being offended by my statements. Not that her statements were offensive, you know, and they want her to really, you know, kowtow. There's something about that right there that is very strange, right? It almost seems, you know, the Torah doesn't speak to that, right? Doesn't the Torah have something to do with being you know, Yehudi? ABC suspends Whoopi Goldberg over a Holocaust comment. So this is over the five days, and this is the most interesting article right here, here, here. This one right here. Um, as a Jew and a rabbi, I'm embarrassed about what happened to Whoopi Goldberg and opinion, right? Um, contrary to popular belief, where there's smoke, there isn't always fire, right? And on Monday, we should have started out here, January 31st, just the beginning, at the beginning. So they knocked her off before even the beginning of Black History Month. Wow. Somebody could say that, that seems kind of racist. And if we are both black and Jews, so to speak, share so much in common as resisting and surviving and, and prevailing and overcoming, you know, various obstacles, you know, regarding our survival as a people and people who are seek to exterminate us as a people, you would think that there'd be a different view, right? About what a whoopee would say, right? Mm. January 31st episode of The View, ABC daytime talk show, there was a conversation about anti-Semitism. Co-host and West Orange resident Whoopi Goldberg, a black woman who is not Jewish, observed that, quote, the Holocaust it doesn't mean that she's not of the tribe of Judah now. We, the Ethiopian Hebrews, are you going to deny our history? The Holocaust is not about race. It's about man's inhumanity to man. Goldberg's remarks, Reuters reported, brought about a firestorm of criticism from Jewish groups and others infuriated by Goldberg's assertion. The most viable and significant of these denunciations came from Jonathan Greenblatt, CEO of the Anti-Defamation League, right? So the Holocaust was about the Nazi systemic annihilation of the Jewish people who they deemed to be an inferior race. They dehumanized them, used this racist propaganda to justify slaughtering six million Jews. Holocaust distortion is dangerous. Um, hashtag enough. Wow. Wow. So because the Nazis deem them, so because white supremacists deem us as chattel, they deemed us as cattle. That means that we black people, we should, can only defend our rights by defending animal rights. And does that mean that if we were animals in the sight of the racists and slavers, enslavers over here, right? Therefore, if they viewed us as beasts, does that mean that we should agree with bestiality? You know, they, they consider us as beasts. So we should go around acting like beasts because they consider us as beasts of burden. We claim our humanity. Right. And even if they called us of a of a different as they did call us, you know, they say we was under the curse of 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 Ham and confuse it with the curse of Canaan. Right. And that's not us. Right? Th that was not us. You know, but anyway, the following day, ABC suspended, the, the, you know, from the view for two weeks. Wow. They didn't care nothing. So Black History Month about something that occurred and happened to black people, a racist inhumanity, dehumanization that has happened, also extermination. There's a lot of genocide that went on, especially on the continent and in some other indigenous areas where there were melanated people. And this is a month where we have a little bit of time to discuss some of these things. And she has been booted off it for two weeks. For two weeks for literally what the English would call a fortnight. Wow. The VIEW panel was discussing McMinn County, Tennessee Board of Education decision to withdraw the graphic novel Mouse from the eighth grade language arts curriculum citing, quote, rough, objectionable language, end quote, and a drawing of a nude woman. Wait, so what in the world? Let me read on. Mouse published by Art Spiegelman 
1992 won the Pulitzer Prize and has been translated into over 30 languages. It is widely viewed as an in, ingenious retelling of the Holocaust, which is also how I see it. So, okay. All right, let's go on. Let's go on. Goldberg's colleague, Joy Bahar, uh, commented that the nudity concerns were likely, quote, a canard to throw you off from the fact that those behind the book ban don't like history that makes white people look bad. Hmm. Now, so Joy Bear, 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 Bahar, she is the first one that now, it seems in what's being quoted here by the, the, the fellow Jew and the rabbi right here on this um, site here. Uh, what's the name of the site again? Let's see what's the name of the site again. Oh, NJ, NJ.com, New Jersey.com, NJ.com. So that's what was said. Goldberg, referring to the Holocaust, responded, well, this is white people doing it to white people. So y'all going to fight among yourselves. Oh, that's the comment there. So the deflection was what she said, the whole Jewish thing and the Holocaust thing. That was the deflection. What Goldberg says, good thing we stuck with this, right? Aren't you happy those who stuck with us right here? Well, some of you might have known this, but this is a research, partly a research show right here. Well, this is white people doing it to white people. So y'all, they hate when we say that y'all thing, right? So y'all gonna fight among, among yourselves. Woo! That's what hit them. Because in a sense, many of us view the Holocaust, right, as inhumanity, yes, but as a white on white something. Because it's, are, 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 are the Jews claiming to be Black? Are they claiming to be Asian? Right? Many of them claim to be not. Many of them claim to be German. <laughs> Many of them claim to be German. I don't want to talk about other facts of the of the of 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 World War Two, where some of their own people, right? You know, like we say about black people, some black people had a hand in making it worse for black people. When we say those things. You know, others point the finger at us looking at ourselves. So Whoopi now points the finger about white people doing it to white people. So you're going to fight among yourselves. Now, the conversation turned to book banning as a means of avoiding discussions, less attractive chapters of American history. During the panel discussion, Goldberg said, let's be truthful about it because the Holocaust isn't about race. It's not about race. It's not about race. She, she almost said that three times, right? It's about man's inhumanity to man. Co-host Anna Navarro pushed back, but it's about white supremacists going after Jews. End quote. You know, I want to say something to this, but let me just get through this and get out of this right here. Goldberg responded, When you have white Jewish people in the state of Israel making all sort of racist comments and insults to Ethiopian, black, Ethiopian, African people who identify as being Beta Israel, House of Israel, Israelites, isn't that a, a form of white supremacy right there? Because us being Jew or Yehudi and observing according to the scripts, that should be, you know, see, here's a difference between the white Gentiles and the white Jews. Among white Gentiles, if you start to believe and pray and do things more or less their way, they, they, they're happy with it. You believe in Jesus. Of course, they're going to push on you Caesar Borgias and the whitewash, many of them, because that's what they used to. You know, if they're only used to the, the foolishness, the ignorance, the lie, they're going to push that right there. But here we see black people who identify prior to them knowing anything about white Jews. And it's clear that many of our black Jewish groups in Africa and elsewhere were not even aware 
so much of white Jews until white Jews came amongst them and said, oh, we heard that y'all are Jewish people. How did y'all become Jewish? And started to ask us a, a million and one questions. All right? Goldberg responded, but these are two white groups of people. Now, get, correct me if I'm wrong, but white Jews in Europe during the Nazi, the time of the Nazis, World War II and the Holocaust, those Jews, they were not white. In fact, in Nazi philosophy, they had the idea of the pure white, like the blonde hair, blue eye, the highest type, because it was about breeding and breeding to that type. And then they were saying these other people, including the Jews, and yes, the Nazis did use it in racial terms, right, racial terms. They view them as, as like less along the human race level and that the blonde hair blue eye was the top of the human race and that the, the the european jews can we say european let's say white jews right that they were at the lowest level right there all right so they were still two groups of white people the minute you turn it into race it goes down this alley let's talk about it for what it is she said goldberg it's how people treat each other it doesn't matter if you're black or white, Jews, it's each other. I think that bothered them. Yeah, I can see why. I can see why they, I don't agree with what they did to Whoopi, you know what I mean? But I can see why they did what they did. Did Goldberg mean that, that mean the Holocaust has nothing to do about race? To me, if it seemed that she was putting racism in the Holocaust to the side, it was only to make a different, perhaps more thoughtful point that with skin color not playing a role in its anti-Jewish violence, the reality of the Holocaust itself is even more extraordinary, terrifying proof of what people are capable of doing to other people. She could have been more articulate in her wording. Hey, Rabbi, can't we even say that couldn't, couldn't, the people who heard this wrong, and I think you're going to say a lot of Jewish people heard this wrong, couldn't they be more thoughtful in their hearing? Not so reactionary, not so based in a sense on their selfish selves. But that's what happens in unscripted television, right? And then they talk about some other things right there. Um, yeah, they say here, Goldberg right here. Okay, right here, she said, Goldberg remarked, it's only been in the last few years that people seem to have stopped listening to one another. When asked if she had an explanation, she responded, because there aren't a lot of reminders of the past. I grew up during a time when there were still World War II veterans around. There were still Holocaust survivors around. Then all these, those folks started dying off. Yes, she, she said this in 2019 New York Times. Times interview. And what you get is other generations. This has happened to us too. Even we, the black Jews and Hebrews and those of the Israelite, this has happened as well too. Is that you get a new generation like the 70 AD, 1970 AD, you know, ISUPK, the One Westers, that they come about and they kind of cut the cords from some earlier history. They, they take some things and then they add some new things and give a whole new spin. So when somebody think of black people as being Israelite or Jew or Hebrew, they might think of it just from one of the more extreme, you know, manifestations like on the YouTubes, you know, somewhat sensationalized. But here Goldberg, she echoes a fear Jewish leaders have been articulating for years as the generation of survivors passes on with no one living to be a witness. Holocaust denial will become easier, but less than three years later, she doesn't get it. Less than three years later, she doesn't get it. Um, okay, we're gonna pick up on this. I think this has to be, I wanna go through this a little bit more right here, because as we scan some of the other articles, they just seem like more of the same thing. You know what I mean? And um, yeah. Um, yeah, it's almost like, why do they speak so much about our black things? You know what I mean? In other words, why, what gives, say, European Jewish people the right to speak or to comment on, 
on black things. You know what I mean? Nobody ever says, they say, well, they are people, they've suffered. And back in the days in America, you know, there's some examples of, you know, um, white Jewish people and black people. Even we, we, there's examples of black Jewish people even back then. Sometimes they suppress too much our Jewishness even back then. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, and that's not, that's not kosher. You know what I mean? But what gives them the right to always be commenting on black causes sometimes as the authority, even above our own people, right, who are survivors or children of survivors. All of us are children of survivors of the atrocity of man to man. As Burhana Selassie Bob Marley says, man to man is so unjust, children. Yay, you don't know who to trust. Whoopi, hmm. Whoopi, you're not Jewish? Not even interested in being black Jewish. You know, our roots over here with this thing, this goes back to, you know, this goes back to our culture here. Beloved. <laughs> yes. Shalom, Chabarim. Shalom. Check out the description. Like, share, right? Hit the notification bell. Also, comment or give a critique for more direct comment or link. L-O-J-S dot O-R-G. Hit the contact there. L-O-J-S dot O-R-G. Shalom. Shalom Lachem, Yeshua Shalom.